glad you're here again with me this week. And I just love exploring God's story with you today. So how about just before we begin, I want you to get ready to enter into God's story. So some of the best ways to do that is to just calm yourself. So when I tell you to, I want you to take a deep breath in and then let it out. Ready? Everybody take a deep breath in and let it out. Do it one more time. Deep breath in and let it out. Do you feel calm? Great. So now we can get ready to get into the story that God has prepared for us to listen to today. So today's story is going to be a good one and I actually have a guest who's going to be telling the story for us today. So that's going to be exciting. And if you've been here in Sunday school or in the gym or over the years you've been in Sunday school, you're going to recognize him. Um, and I'm just going to call him Mr. K for now. So in a bit, we're going to get to Mr. K. But before we do that, I want to bring up the memory challenge that we had um, for the last week and going forward. So it's, here it is. And we're going to say it again today because the more you say it, the more it gets stuck in your head. And it's a good one, right? But I made it a bit different for us this week. And I'm hoping that maybe you guys can show me your actions for it. So I'm going to go over it with you and you can help me with this. And I'm going to show you the actions I made up. So we're going to start with for God. And he's up there, right? So for God so loved, so make a heart, or you can go like this, the world that he gave, so act like you're giving something, he gave his one and only son. So if some of you know, sign language for Jesus is this, because remember he had holes from the, being on the cross, or being nailed to the cross. So this was the symbol that um, they created for Jesus. So we know Jesus is the Son of God. So let's try that whole thing again. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Now that whoever, so point around, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Okay, let's try that part again. So that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it through, but to save the world through him. So try that part again, again, for God did not, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So see if you can, if you need to repeat the rewind the video, you can watch it again or show me your own actions for it. So I want you to keep practicing that at home and maybe next week we'll see a couple of you saying it. It's nice to see you all today. Today we're going to look into God's word and we're going to discuss one of the ways that God cares for us. And you might be wondering why I'm standing in my kitchen today, but as the story goes on, you'll understand why I'm standing here. Let's start our lesson then today with asking God to be with us as we look into his word. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for this day that we can worship, that we can study your word. We ask that you open our hearts and our minds, that we can understand what you want to know, for us to know on this day of um, studying your word. Amen. As you know, Jesus was 
um, walking uh, through the countryside and a lot of people followed him for a lot of reasons and the crowds got bigger all the time because the, the, the popularity of Jesus spread all over the place and people wanted to see him, they wanted to hear him, they wanted to uh, have their sick healed and just if Jesus touched them they would be healed and the people were excited to see him. So uh, one day Jesus was walking and the crowds got bigger and bigger and bigger. There was moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and kids and little kids and they were all excited to hear what Jesus had to say to that to them that day. So Jesus uh, climbed up on a bit of a hill and everybody gathered around and the little kids sat in the front and uh, in the soft grass and listened to Jesus talk. And Jesus talked and they listened and the message that Jesus had to say went on and it went on and it was past lunchtime already and they still were listening because Jesus had so much to tell them and they were excited to listen to what Jesus had to say and then after a while it was supper time and Jesus was still speaking with them and they were still listening but a little while later their tummies began to grumble a little bit and they thought we're getting hungry and they were out in the field. There was nothing around for them to get any field. And then the, Jesus said, we should feed these people. And the disciples said, well, we, we can't feed these people. There's too much, there's too many people here. And there's a town that's too far away. And then we'd have to go to town and buy some food. And we don't have enough money for that food. And then they thought, well, we're going to have to look around for some food. So. I'm wondering what kind of food they would have looked for. And I'm going to just give you an idea. Do you think maybe they could have found a Kentucky Fried Chicken place there where Jesus was? Do you think they were there? I don't think so. I wonder if there was a McDonald's. Everybody likes McDonald's. I'm sure they could have had some McDonald's there, but you know what? There was no McDonald's out there in the countryside. And the disciples were getting worried because they didn't know what to feed these people. And then one of the disciples had a great idea and thought, maybe pizza would be good to have. And you know what, boys and girls? There was no pizza there either. There was no food there. They were getting worried. The disciples were worried. So the disciples went through the crowd and started looking for food, wondered if anybody had brought some. And Andrew, one of the disciples, found this little boy and he asked the little boy, he had a lunch, he says, do you mind to share your lunch with Jesus? And the little boy said, I'd love to give my lunch to Jesus. So Andrew took the lunch the little boy had and they went up to Jesus and Jesus had the little boy's lunch. And this was the little boy's lunch. Anybody want to guess what would be in the little boy's lunch? Peanut butter and jam sandwich? Maybe some chocolate chip cookies? Let's see what was in the lunch. I see five loaves of bread. Little loaves, but they're good. Well, I hope the boy's got some more in his lunch. Let's see. There is more. Wonder what that could be. Let's look and see. Two fishes. Well, the disciples looked at that, the five loaves and the two fishes, and they said, that's not near enough food to feed the people. And Jesus said, you ask the people to sit down and we can get started to eat. And the disciples were wondering, how is this going to work? Five loaves and two fishes? That's barely enough for one person. Jesus asked them then to be quiet. And then Jesus took the bread and he held it up and he gave thanks to God for the food. And then he broke it up and he gave it to the disciples and asked them to hand it out among the people. So they handed out the bread and the fish to all the people and they all had lots to eat and they ate and they ate and they ate all the grandmas and the grandpas and the little kids and the moms and the dads 
They ate till they couldn't eat anymore. They were full. And then Jesus said, has everybody been fed? And they were. And then Jesus said, ask the people then, and we'll gather up all the leftover food, because he didn't want anything to be wasted. So they gathered up the food, and you know what? They had 12 big baskets of bread and fish left over, and you wonder how Jesus did that. How did that two fish and five loaves feed that many people? Well, it's called a miracle. Jesus did miracles. And the people were ready to go home after they had been fed. And on their way home, they realized that Jesus also carried about, cared about how their uh, bodies were, that they were fed, but he cared about their hearts too. And he told them all the blessings that he needed to hear that day. So Jesus cares for us in many ways. And one of the ways especially is food. So now you know why I'm standing in my kitchen today. Let's thank God today for this food, for the lesson that we had, and that we can uh, enjoy his uh, thankfulness to us, his blessings to us through food. Dear God, we thank you this day for the opportunity of you showing us how you care for us through food, and not only food, but also your word. We ask you to be with us the rest of this day. Keep us in your care then, for Jesus' sake, amen. Wow, isn't it pretty exciting to know that God cares even about making sure that we have food to eat? He loves you so much that he doesn't want you to even be hungry. That's pretty cool. I have a question. If you can only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Well, mine would be donuts. I love donuts. It was a pretty hard toss up between chocolate and donuts, but I think I prefer donuts over chocolate. But if I could have both, I would. But unfortunately, they're not the most nutritious food for you. It's not the greatest for my waistline. So if I had to pick a nutritious food, it would probably be an apple. The crunchier, the sweeter, the better. So what about you? What would you pick? Unfortunately, there are actually places in the world, I mean, maybe even your neighbor, it, they could be close by, but there are people around us and there's people in countries and farther away that don't have enough food to eat. Now, I don't know if you remember at the beginning, way back in September, October, we introduced our sponsor child. Now we've had him for, a, um, we've been sponsoring him for a long time. And um, so we're doing it again. So um, if you remember, this is, Alejandre, and he lives in Haiti. So um, it's out this way. And him and his family don't have enough money uh, to always buy food, or not necessarily food either, but sometimes for schooling and that sort of thing. So we've been helping him as a Sunday school group through Covenant to be able to support his family with food and clothing and education and all these things. And it's been a blessing for him that we were able to do that. And you guys have been doing a great job sending in your money. And so I just want to remind you that this is a great way that we can help those who aren't able to have food. And Jesus gives us the ability to give money to help these people. So, I want to challenge you. If you can, maybe bring some money for our sponsor child. Now, I know we can't get into church right now, but um, there are, uh, if you go to the sliding doors at the front of the church, there is a mailbox that you can just slip your money in in an envelope and mark on there for sponsor child. And that's maybe a way that we can give back and help and be part of God's mission to help and spread God's love. Another way, you yeah, got lots of cans around the house of uh, goods, maybe drop some off at a food bank. There's lots of people in our own community that need help and need food. Another way, there's a community free table. Every Saturday, you can bring baked goods there. Spend an afternoon baking with your mom and dad and drop it off on a community free table. There's just so many ways that we can care for people as well, just like Jesus cared for the crowd of people in the Bible story today. 
Well, that's it for today, kids. I hope you had a good time with us today, Mr. K and myself. And I hope that you were able to learn some things about Jesus and what he's called us to do. So I want to encourage you this week to find opportunities where you can show love to others. Whether you bring money for your sponsored child or bring a canned goods or baked goods or you help mom make supper or whatever. There's just so many opportunities that we can show God's love to those around us. I hope you have a great week and I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Bye!